what we saw today was a, a complete phony act of uh, fake sincerity. We didn't see an apology. We didn't see really an admission of fault. We saw kind of a sidestep, um, collateral kind of comments that were made. Didn't really get to the heart of the matter. The leaders of Canada's main opposition parties cap off another week of attacks on the Prime Minister. From his position to the top of the polls, Andrew Scheer renewed his call for Justin Trudeau to resign. The new MP, Jagmeet Singh, isn't going that far yet, but is demanding a public inquiry. How effective have Andrew Scheer and Jagmeet Singh been in pressing the Liberals with Parliament on a break? Well, the Sunday Scrum returns in Ottawa. Susan Riley and John Ibbotson, Vicky Mochama in Toronto. Okay, well, let's look at Andrew Scheer. How effective has he been in handling this issue based on what we're seeing in the polls? A bit of a bump up for him, but still uh, criticized for calling for resignations. Vicky, do you want to start us off? I think for Andrew Scheer, the resignation call is really the, the most concerning because I don't know that anything in this in this particular scandal amounts to calling for a resignation. It's also seemingly at odds with what conservatives in the House are doing, especially on the Justice Committee. They're concerned with sort of the process and the procedure and ensuring that they're getting the right questions asked and ensuring that they're speaking to the right people about this issue. Meanwhile, Andrew Scheer is not necessarily uh, participating with what the rest of the, just, the conservatives on the Justice Committee are doing. So I think there's a disconnect there. I also think it's not necessarily bouncing back on him. I don't think he's getting the benefit of the scandal. I think it's hurting the Liberals more than it's helping Andrew Scheer. Susan, I see you mm -hmm. nodding in assent there. I'm looking at this from the point, as I look at all these things, from the point of view of a journalist and not a partisan. And frankly, there's no news coming from Scheer and there's no news coming from Jagmeet Singh. Their reactions are in, you know, hyperbolic and entirely predictable. And their outrage, I would argue, is as scripted as, as Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Trudeau's since, um, attempts at sincerity. So I think, you know, I, I think they have had no impact at all. That being said, um, I think a couple of opposition players have had major impact and helpful impact. One is Lisa Raitt, the most effective uh, questioner, I would say, the, the uh, Conservative MP, Deputy uh, Leader, uh, and the most effective um, questioner, I would say, on the Justice Committee. The other is Murray Rankin, uh, a, a respected New Democrat, um, also a lawyer who um, actually announced that he's leaving, uh, he also has been very, um, very, uh, how would I describe him, disciplined. Uh, both of them have been very disciplined and very well informed, very well briefed. They've inflicted damage, I think, at the Justice Committee. Um, and just in conclusion, I will say that I'm sure there's more than a few uh, conservatives watching this performance wishing that Lisa Raitt spoke French and that she, in fact, was the leader instead of Andrew Scheer. Nathan Cullen as well getting a few licks in. Of course, he isn't uh, running again also. So, John, what's your take on the, on the conservative take in all of this? Well, I don't think that uh, for the Conservatives or even for the NDP, for that matter, there's a lot you can do. This, this isn't um, mm -hmm. a policy dispute over taxes or um, whether we should be doing this or that. And the one side is taking one position and the other side is taking another position, climate change, pipeline, something like that. So voters have to choose. This is all self-inflicted injury on the side of the Liberal Party. And so at one level, all the opposition can do and should do is sort of step, a, step aside and, and, and let things unfold. Uh, Susan's absolutely right, though. The place where uh, the opposition party needs to do its job is in committee. And, and Lisa Raitt, especially in revealing uh, that there were communications between the former clerk of the Privy Council and the current one, the former clerk um, being now chair of at SNC-Lavalin, um, that, was, that was a bit of a bombshell of, um, sort of mid-testimony. Uh, so I think the Conservatives and the NDP are both doing the job that they need to do in the committee, which is where it matters right now. Um, and for the opposition leaders, um, it's best to just uh, stand aside. We want to address something that happened during the course of Andrew Scheer's town hall event on Friday. Uh, you're going to hear a man ask Scheer a question and then part of Scheer's response to it. And then we'll hear Andrew Scheer addressing the situation the following day after being prompted by a reporter. Have a listen. Trudeau gave $600 million to the Clinton Foundation. The Clinton Foundation is part of child trafficking and child sacrifice. If you, do, you, if you study it, it's in the pizza gate. And how do we get that money back? It's clear that a huge sum of, his, of the dollars that he has taken from Canadian taxpayers has gone to his own personal uh, projects. You mentioned the, the, the Clinton Foundation. Why did you not call it out when you were asked that question? 
Uh, I heard the question was related to the government's, uh, Justin Trudeau's decision to give a grant to the Clinton Foundation. That was what I answered. I didn't hear anything about uh, the other aspect that you just you mentioned. You mentioned Pizzagate oh, I theory. I, I, Pizzagate conspiracy, yeah. You I mentioned didn't hear Pizzagate. that. I, I heard the Clinton Foundation part of the question. I heard other parts of the questions, but I certainly didn't hear that. <coughs> yeah, Pizzagate stood out. Uh, child sacrifice stood out for me, too. Uh, the statement coming from Mr. Shear's people after this says, Mr. Shear does not keep up with paranoid American alt-right conspiracy theories and as such was not familiar with the term until it came into the questioning today. So, since learning about the Pizzagate conspiracy, Mr. <laughs> Shear obviously uh, believes it is ridiculous and dangerous and that such conspiracies have no place in our political uh, debate. So, uh, perhaps a diversion from the main issue here, but something I think worth asking in terms of the stakes of all of this. Uh, John, do you want to start us off in terms of uh, what he heard and uh, how he reacted? Yeah, also, the $600 million was a bit of a strange number, too. Look, um, a little inflated. Yeah. Look, the, the, the conservatives in general, and this leader in particular, have a problem, uh, which is that there is an extreme right wing radical fringe in Canada. Some of them are gravitating to Maxime Bernier's uh, People's Party of Canada, but some of them are, are, are within the Conservative Party itself. And every, the first job of every conservative leader, no matter who that conservative leader is, is to marginalize, cauterize that very dangerous um, alt-right or nativist or extreme right wing. I remember I was down in Washington in 2008 when a woman uh, uh, approached John McCain at a, at a town hall and said that Barack Obama wasn't born in the United States, that he was a traitor. And, and I remember John uh, McCain stopping her and saying, no, he's a good American. Uh, he's trying to serve his country. We just disagree profoundly on the best way to do that. That's the kind of thing Andrew Scheer needs to learn how to do. He's a new leader. He's only been at the job a couple of years. But he has got to learn to figure out when he's confronted in situations like that to, to establish that these are always disagreements between citizens um, who are you know, loyal Canadians um, and, and shut down any suggestion at all that he's pandering to the extreme right within his own base. Yeah, Vicky, what do you make of that exchange? I, I make of that exchange that I'm not particularly surprised. I mean, I think it's laughable that anyone who's in politics in North America isn't aware of what Pizzagate is or was. I, I think that's, I can't, I couldn't fathom that Andrew Scheer learned about it this week. Um, but I think most importantly, I don't think this is a diversion from the main story. If we're having a conversation about Justin Trudeau's leadership and their ethical and moral approach to issues, I think some of the failings on Andrew Scheer's part are worth noting as well. And I think they often get pushed aside or swept under in the idea that these are somehow trivial issues or they're sideshows. No, they are the main show. Andrew Scheer showed up at a rally where noted white supremacist Faith Goldie was also a speaker. That's part of the show. That is a decision that him and his party made. His campaign leader uh, is someone who founded the Re was part of the founding team of the rebel. That's part of the main show. If we are going to talk about how our leaders make choices, and who they allow to help them make choices. We need to also be looking at Andrew Scheer and indeed Jagmeet Singh and Elizabeth May and everyone else as well. But Andrew Scheer's uh, tenure as leader has been notable for some of its gaps, even on the social media front and who they allowed the, to speak to them, who they allowed to come to, uh, who they, the company that they keep. If Andrew Scheer is not supporting alt-right conspiracy theories or indeed uh, white supremacists, they somehow seem to be keeping up with him. And I think that's worth talking about frequently. Last word to you, Susan. When I first heard, the, when I first encountered this story, I just saw uh, Mr. Shear's explanation, and I thought, "Oh, that's plausible." Uh, you know, maybe he didn't hear it. Uh, then I saw the clip. <laughs> and I thought, as Vicky just said, how can you be that unaware? Um, in my view, he's so afraid, desperately afraid of uh, driving certain voters into the arms of Max Bernier's party that he's willing to, you know, accept, tolerate, tolerate them. Um, He's enjoying a surge in the polls, a slight surge in the polls right now. And I don't think um, it's got anything to do with him, to tell you the truth. I think there are a lot of swing voters who are really disillusioned with what's going on with the Liberals, and they're, they're parking there because that's always been the traditional way to park. I think it's also worth noting, although not directly related to this issue, but that the, um, the Conservatives have not yet said whether or not they would allow a deferred prosecution agreement for SNC Lavalin, whether they would let this company off the hook, as it were, um, I think that's a very stunning and and damning uh, admission, actually.